so what we've done is we've come out early morning, so we come out about 7.20 on the third day of owning the car. And we are going to McDonald's, which is a trip outside what we usually do, when you do that on a Sunday morning. Yeah. Um, now we left with 80 miles charged, a full charge, it shows 80 miles, always does do for some reason. So 80 miles. So I've had the heating on the on auto climate control, so that knocks a mile off. So that's the difference there. Um, and I've had the wipers on. It's dark. The lights have been on. I don't know if that runs off the 12 volt battery, the lead acid one, and the wipers. Um, so I've had everything on. Um, and so we've travelled to this point. The miles, according to the sat nav, if I reverse the route back home, is 26 kilometres. Um, we have arrived um, with 68. Uh, miles left on the clock so if I turn I have to turn off the sh minute. if I turn off the climate control um, it jumps up to 70 so in essence we've used with it on all the way and when I've stopped in the car park and then turned off the climate control the amount remaining is 70 so to travel 26 kilometers and I can't seem to find a setting to change it to miles we've used 10 miles um, so I shall try and work that out and I shall get back to you I'm really I'm going to try and find out a setting. It must be possible to change the navigation from kilometres to displaying miles, but I can't see it in settings. So, so for 26 kilometres, we've used 10 miles of battery power. Um, I stuck to the speed limits within our allotted 10% um, deviation from them. So I've been going the speed limit all the way. I've been following other cars, which hasn't been an issue. Um, we've been basically been going, yeah, going the speed limit the whole way. Um, and it's, it's, yes, not used a lot, to be honest, is it? Driving correctly, I suppose, rather than breaking all the speed limits. Right, it turns out that the um, 26 kilometres is 16.15555 miles. So we used up 10 miles of power, according to the computer. And we did 16.51, uh, 15, sorry, sticking to the speed limit. So we drove very, very economically, and we got 16 rather than 10. So it's very good, very, very good. So we'll see on the way back what the uh, thing is as well. Um, it says it says 70 with it on, let me put on auto. So it's 68, so I've put the climate control and everything on it. 68 miles on the clock now. When I get back home, we'll have a look because leaving home is a long downhill, is about a mile and a half of downhill. So that may eat into the mileage going up. So we'll review that uh, when I get back home. Goodbye. Okay, so we're back yeah. with some interesting results. Um, we left, actually it wasn't on uh, 60, 68, it was on 67 because I played on the phone and stuff and left the car on with the heat and stuff like that. So 67 when we left, it's now 37. And we've travelled the same distance on the way back. Which is interesting because that's, 40, 50, 60, that's 30 miles lost on the gasometer. For the six, what did I say it was? 16.15 travelled. So I've used twice as much power to get home as I have done to go there. In a very, very brief description, the journey to Gloucester from our house is downhill for about two miles, three miles ish, including little tiny uphills. So very generalisation, but the rest of it is almost all flat, or slightly, very vaguely uphill, but otherwise slightly flat. On the way back, of course, is the reverse of that. So I think the main, th I think the main issue is, it's not an issue, I don't think. If I understand the guesstimate correctly, so it's trying to say because the last three miles of our journey it went down, then that's when it went down. It was all right all the way until those hills. So travelling up those hills, of course, is then saying, well, if you carry on like this, this is the amount of miles you're going to have left. But, of course, once you reach the top of the hill, you've got to go down it. As soon as we started to go down, it actually went down to 35. So we started going down the hill for about half a mile, no, no more than that, and it went up to 37. So I don't think you can really rate, a, rate its mileage based on this as such. I mean, obviously, it, it doesn't know altitude. It, for it to almost be accurate, it needs to take into account altitude of your journey, especially if you've, got, if you've programmed your journey in on the way back. It should then give you the range on that clock, I think. I think that's how it should really work. It doesn't. It shows you what you're going to get left on the battery, 
exactly how you are now, more or less within, it changes it within a minute, 30 seconds to a minute. So obviously the last three miles of the journey was almost all uphill. If I carried on like that, it would be 37 miles left, but I'm not gonna, cause I'm gonna obviously go down the hill. Okay, sorry about that. It's um, got all these technical things, all these gadgets. They've always got their little uh, quirks and problems, haven't they? Even the iPhone, which um, seems to continuously run out of storage space. Um, but yeah, um, so it's run out in the middle of what I was saying. But anyway, I've, I've, what I've done is I've thought with the miles difference. So I've it's only a guessometer, isn't it? So it's guessing where you're going to be. So if, you, if your journey is all uphill on the way back, it's going to be terrible. It's going to be down because you're using a lot more power to go uphill than you are downhill, obviously, or on the flat. Um, so I thought what I'll do is I'll actually look at the battery uh, charge because that is accurate. It should be a constant, as in it changes. It gives you a live reading of what the battery is left, left on the battery. So it's not guessing anything. It, it is what it is. Um, I've come back and I've had a look straight away. So I've, And the only way to do that unless you buy the, the spy app to find out what the actual battery is um, which you can get and I'll do another video on it at some point I've just plugged it in, come straight in the house so it's on the trickle charge so it could be on for an hour and it makes hardly any difference what is it, 8 miles, something like that, an hour so anyway, I plugged it in, it's been in for 60 seconds click refresh on the um, if you sign up to Nissan Plus which I recommend you definitely do on the uh, on your PC if you've got a PC, if you haven't, you can't see this um, if you've got but if you've got a mobile phone, you can download an app on Android or iOS. Um, and it's long story short, it shows 50%. So go in, so it started off with 80 miles. I traveled 30 and a tiny little bit. And I've got 50% battery left. So it's used 50% of its power. Now it starts off, and this is something I still haven't found the answer to. And hopefully in the next one of the diaries, I'll find out an answer to it. I always start with 80 miles available. Completely set myself up for... Well, they say 115 or something on a new model. I set myself up, people say 100 at best, but real life, being realistic, 80. What I seem to have is a Nissan Leaf, which is supposed to be better, is the newest model, and I seem to be starting off with 80, which is not achievable, because it's what's saying is available, um, and real life achieving 60. And that's proved exactly right in today's trip. It's 30 miles and a tiny little bit, and I've used 50% of my battery, so... 100% is 60 by default so if I did this I could do the same journey again and I would be at zero so that's a bit strange <laughs> uh, temperature was five degrees I think it was nine actually traveling but anyway so five degrees it's raining so I presume that creates more resistance on the car when it's traveling driving through water blah 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 um, the heating was on so I could have gained if I turn the heating off I could have gained well I could have gained uh, a mile it just changes by a mile if you turn it off which is hardly hardly I thought I'd have to travel around a lot of my time with it off, but if it only makes uh, one mile difference. I think that's because it's a new model, though, and they've improved the the way it heats up. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to try and find out where that is. I have no idea. Not a clue why it says 80 on 100% charge. Um, I, haven't, I haven't seen that. I've never seen that in any of the videos. I've done spent hours watching videos before I even purchased this, and they're all, they're all set to it. They show 109, the old version. So I was expecting this one to show a 14% increase, it's supposed to be, in distance travel. You can travel on the battery charge. So I would have thought it would say 115 or something like that. Um, but no, it's just a bit of a shock when I started out the first morning and turned it on and went, wow, uh, 80, 80 miles. And when I checked the app and checked online, yeah, it says 100% charge on it. So It's looking as though the new model Leaf has a real world range if driven. By the way, as a worth reiterating, the fact that I drove it like a saint. I stuck to the speed limits. I used regen braking as much as I could. It was on eco mode both ways on the trip. Um, the only thing I had on was the um, heating, which on the new leaf, uh, if you turn it off, it shows a one mile increase. If you turn it on, it shows a one mile decrease. So, um, hmm. Yes, so it's looking like a real real world usage, driving very, very well and very, very restrained, um, but sticking to the speed limit. So you're not driving at 30 and a 60, I'm driving 50 and a 50. Um, it, it, it seems to be 60 miles, which is starting to get to a point where it's not suitable, which is a bit, very, very, I find it 
very nerve wracking to be honest. Um, yeah, that's just really worried me. That again <laughs> seems to be one long string of worries. But I'll try. I'll speak to Nissan and see what they've got to say about it. I mean, my own, only thing I can't, it can't be right. But I was kind of thinking perhaps a trickle charge, which they don't really want you to do. They want you to use a home charging. Um, well, not home charging because that's something different. That's six point six kilowatt. It seems uh, they want you to use a um, get British Gas to install when you're charging points. Increase it from ten amps to sixteen. I think it is. Uh, so it brings the charge down by by two hours. So it goes from ten down to eight, approximately. Um, so perhaps they restrict it if you put it on a trickle charge. I don't know. But when you check the battery, it says a hundred percent. So I can imagine if it only charged to eighty percent and it did eighty miles, that makes sense to me. But um, yeah, okay, that's that done. So this is the um, I called it Nissan Plus earlier on. It's actually I think it's actually called U Plus. Is, looks like that if you want to find it now so this was the date um, 26th of January and I last did an update at 50% that's when I walked back into the house and checked the charge you've got this panel on here basically once you log in to the car um, what I'm going to do is do an update now the time is 12.41 so I will do a refresh that then goes wirelessly up to the cloud service and back down again to the car and moving from the car back up to the cloud and back down again so it takes a little bit of time more so as you probably know I'm in a rural area the, I've got no phone signal here uh, in the house outside I got a tiny bit of a signal so that car so far apart from it taking a while um, is, is pretty good to be honest there we go so 75% charged um, now so it's gone up 25% since uh, 10.07 it's not three hours, two and a half hours that's just on a trickle charge so yep and you can turn the aircon on stuff like that so climate control does all that so that's quite good just go to 57 miles on it should then be able to turn on the climate control from here there is, it is a bit buggy has to be said. So if I click this, so it's the page is fully loaded. If I click this, I click start. Ah, uh, it so does that, which I don't really get. And then nothing happens. So I've clicked it, but nothing. Oh, there we go. It's kicked in. It's a little bit strange. You sometimes have to double click it, but there we go. And I'll go into that in more depth anyway at some point. So I'm going to go out in the car now and do another video on something completely different, um, which I'll post up later. But uh, that's just a brief overview, really, and the of the car wings, which of course the car wings on the Nissan Leaf is the same. So they're sort of linked together. You can do a lot on the PC while you're sat in your nice house, nice and warm and cosy, and send all to your car and make your car do stuff. So it's quite good, really. So, yeah. This is my setup, really. Through there, we got that, and so you can see how tight it is. Very, very tight, but very good. Squeeze through there. Right there, we go. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Um, back. That is the setup. Okay. Two modes. You've got the power button down here. If you put your foot on the brake and press that, it will basically turn the car on ready to drive. Um, it won't do that when you're plugged in and charging, which is great. That's a great little safety feature to stop you doing that. But if you just Basically, if you're sat in here waiting for someone or you want the radio on um, for some reason, um, whilst the car's not on, then you can you can do that by just pressing it once, it would appear. So what that does is it turns this system on, as you can see there. But none of the dash lights are on. So that's interesting. Um, it's a good little feature if you want just to mess about with this, set it up without the car actually being on. Um, with that though, your heating won't work. Shh. We were at a takeaway last night waiting to get something, just having a chat. 
wanted the car off, but you can't put the heating on, which is a shame. Now, I think if I press this again, it does turn it on. But then if I press, so if I, that's it, so that's what this says, so that's the time. So that that's now on. <laughs> but if, so that's, that's sort of two modes now, but there is a third mode, which is the car actually on ready to drive. Now, as far as I know, if I turn all this off again, so that's all off. If I now press the brake and turn it on, it will then tell me that it can't go because the car's charged up, I think. No, it hasn't done that. That's interesting. Oh, there we go. Yes. So it can't start, pull out, charge plug. So there's sort of three modes. Um, pressing the brake makes it ready to go, which is understandable. Um, turning it, pressing it once turns it on. Uh, to just use the console, center console, and turning it on again lights up all the dash and everything. Uh, pressing it once more once in either of those modes just turns the whole thing off. So I just want this on because I'm going to try and uh, I've got to answer a question that someone's asked regarding uh, charge stations. Um, so wait, that's come on. That now displays nothing. So there you go. Okay, what I'm going to do is I am going to go to the charge point in Colfer, which is my closest charge point, and do a little video of that for you so you know the problems that I had. I should have done that there and then, really. Well, the guy was there, it embarrassed him a bit more, wouldn't it? Um, so I'm going to go and do that um, and see how that goes and update from there. So, just to highlight one of my problems, I'm doing this one-handed and I apologise. Um, so, my destination, I know where it is, because I just happen to know. So, if I press destination, I've then got the option of a charging station. And then, near current location, so I'll press that. If I press near current location, it searches for it. It comes up with my own home, and then it comes up with one 7.5 miles away. Or my nearest... <laughs> My nearest Dissad dealer is about three miles away, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go to that one. Um, very very strange that that's an up to date list, and that's just not on the the car wings at all. It's in the same garage. So um, yeah, okay okay, that's all I wanted to say really. This the the list it doesn't seem very accurate at all. Despite, this is just a, a food for thought moment, um, despite me having my issues with 80 miles, being 60 miles and all this business, putting that aside, all I've ever heard is it's restrictive because it's 100 miles, 60, which I must admit is again a bit restrictive, but it, putting all that aside, you just see to hear, oh it only does 100 miles, it restricts you, you can't go places. Um, but I, I think what's not really remembered is that not on, only that it actually frees you up gives you a, a gives you freedom for instance I went to Gloucester this morning with my boy to McDonald's just really just because it's a new car obviously I want to drive it as much as I can um, that's that's freedom isn't it you think on the way back you know I wouldn't have done that trip in a petrol car because it just wouldn't be you know it, it costs five quid in fuel in fuel only so you know I wouldn't I wouldn't have done it so and it cost me nothing so it, it, um, it that gave me the freedom to go and do that so I thought it was an interesting interesting way of thinking about it for, for the the mileage it can do it frees up all those journeys that you wouldn't normally do or you try and bulk together making for maybe more stress in the day um, you know whatever freeze that up which I thought was quite good okay here we are the uh, Nissan charge point the ominous scary charge point which is Evo I've never actually have really had a chance to look at this apart from my first encounter when I've got the Nissan um, that is it charge point so it's got uh, one of those. Uh, it's an fctgroup.com, so I should be visiting that site later. And that's that's it basically. So there's no 
you need a cable to charge from, basically. Um, so, yep, she cannot be charged here because I don't have that cable to plug in. And not only that, I don't have the card, so it's not very far away, and it's it's not it's not a rapid charge anyway. So, but it would give give you quite a bit of juice quite quickly. So, I would like to use it if I could, but um, not to be in this case. Right, what I'm going to do now is go on another journey. Okie dokie, right, so now I am going to travel from the Nissan garage in Colford to the in-laws. It's 8.3 miles away. And if I, oh, turn that off or not? No, I've started it up. It's 8.3 miles away. It's saying on the guesser meter I got 57. And what I've done now is I have turned the battery, I can't turn the camera in actually, but I'll try it one-handed all that sort of business i've got 75 percent if you can see that on there so 75 percent battery the mart is showing 190 miles on the clock at the moment 190 which is what i've done so far so it's shown on the guesstimate of 57 with a battery percentage of 75 percent available um, i'm going to drive there on eco mode uh, and i shall update of what the percentage of battery is and what the guesstimate says when i get there for the 8.3 miles of journey just so you know what uh, where we live um, in terms of road etc this is the sort of area we live in so it's, it's roads just like this it's pretty rural um, it's not the most rural place but it is fairly rural twisty windy roads up and down hills gives it a good solid test of environment really in the city, it's always flat in it, more or less. So, um, yep, that's what it's like. An old mining place, essentially. Coal, that is. I've just had a thought, in fact, that I don't believe what it says when it says that it's a mile taken off when you put the heating on. Unless someone can correct me on this because it always says a mile. Now, surely if, surely if the temperature is set to whatever the highest it'll go, surely then it's gonna be more than a mile, isn't it? It's been burning more energy because it's gonna get the, the cabin hotter. Whereas if it's set at sort of 18, it's not, it's not gonna take as much energy, is it? Unless I'm misunderstanding how it works. I would have thought to heat it to 22 would be more energy than to, to uh, 18, even if it has to, once it gets there, it sustains it, surely it still, once it gets to that temperature, it's still going to be, it's still going to be, cost more in terms of energy to keep it at 22 than it is to keep it at 18. But then I don't know anything about anything, so there we go, just a thought. Okay, this is a classic example, so I've got to turn right, and... That's what's facing me. <laughs> right, so I'm just going to go straight on until this updates. So it's 3.7 miles at this point. We'll see what this does for me. Continue on the current route. Right, so it's put it at 3.7 to 4.3. That's an increase. So, yep, there we go. It's set to eco route, so it's not the fastest route. It's set to eco, so the best route. So. There you go. That's what happens on journeys, I guess. This is what people talk about, road closures, diversions, stuff like that. So it does actually happen. Okay, I've arrived. It's 199 miles. That little bit of diversion. So that was pretty much spot on. And uh, then that sat nav was. And I got 57 miles left and 66% battery. So I've traveled approximately nine miles. And it's gone down by that much. So there you go. Right here with the wife, she's going to have her first go in it. So, what you need to do is put your foot on the brake and then press the power button. Do I take my foot off the brake yet? You can do. I like this. And it's in park, so you go across and back for drive. Do I need to put my foot on anything to do that? So now I can yeah, sorry, foot on your brake, sorry. Whilst I do it? Yeah. And then it's just accelerated. Oh, it's moving anyway. Oh, there we go. Can't actually see it on the top. Right it's better than the. Yeah, I can see a bit better. Now. 
Better than the passenger seat, the passenger seat is lower. Passenger seat is very low. If you're short ass like me, this one's all right. I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, even with that punch, it's on eco. So when I, we turn around. Do I not have any gears? Nope. So on the way back up, what we'll do is we will... Ready, 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 ready? No, 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 because you've got to take it off eco. We've got to go back up this way. We'll take it off eco. So it's not actually as fast <laughs> as it will be. <laughs> <laughs> Don't waste my back. I've got to go to the new one. <laughs> Wow, what a journey we've had. Okay, get in the car. We have had a journey and a half. Uh, right, so I left Lydney. So we're at Lydney. My wife, you've just seen the video. She went in it, tried it. Took her back to her in-laws. To the in-laws. And... From there, I had to go and pick up my boy from Newant and then come back home again. So I programmed it in and we had 47 miles available on the leaf, according to the gaso meter. Um, and we had a 47. I think the trip was 34 miles. Yep, yeah, 34 miles, that's right. Um, now, <laughs> we did all that. Um, we're back home, thank goodness for that, but five miles ago, if not six miles ago, the coming into Mitcheldean, the battery uh, guesser meter went to three lines again like I had on the first day, with nothing available on it, and the battery showed 7% remaining, um, and then we thought, oh dear. Um, and then we kept going, and it got down to 6% of the battery. And then it showed three lines itself with no reading. We regened a bit going down a hill for about a quarter of a mile and it came back up to 6%. And then again, it went down to nothing again. Bit of a roller coaster ride, this one. So that was um, just outside of Mitchell Dean, so it didn't last very long. So we had to travel another approximately four and a half miles back home on showing no readings at all on across either of them. So if we've proved nothing else, we've proven that you can go at about 40 miles an hour. Um, for about four and a half miles at least and it's still going now I've driven up the drive and it's fine um, the hill just before we get home is really steep and long it's probably a mile probably a mile uphill real steep gradient so we thought oh no we're gonna make it a few prayers were said um, and we're home which is good um, so yeah very scary that one. I'll plug it in and I'll go into the house and show you what the reading shows on the thing. I'll also flip this camera off to turn it off because it won't let you flip it at the same time. I'll flip it over and sh show you what the readings are. For those of you, all the video reviews I see where they say they've never ever run it out, which is quite surprising. Um, I mean, I set off my journey today, I think probably with 75% of the battery charged back up after our visit to Gloucester. And I've travelled, um, I'll have to work it out later. I'll try and tally it all up and work out what I've driven. So that's the reading, which shows lines flashing, no reading on the battery. Um, I think if I flip this through, and it's got no estimated times. There we go. So uh, I did turn the heating off in the end because <laughs> it was just too risky. So I did turn the heating off. And I bound in a window because it was misting up. But we had snow, unbelievably. So the temperatures dropped down to 1 degree C. So it went from 9 this morning. And it's gone all the way down to 1. We've had snow in Mitchell Dean as we're coming in. There was snow, heavy snow, so icy. So well, everything was against it, really. But uh, no, we got home. So there's the garage door. We're home on it. So I wonder how many miles it does without any um, things. So we shall find out. set the charger to not allow it to come on so it's plugged in and what I'm trying to do is fit it onto uh, so it comes on at um, 
at a, after midnight so we get the cheapest tariff so that's what it's doing it should come on no blue lights you see that should come on again once uh, it's gone midnight but I'm going to turn it on before then because we're completely dead so I shall do that what do you think of the car Jacob? Mm. <laughs> I'm going to have a yeah in a minute so there's no charging at all on it so. I no, you haven't. So we'll do that. Right, that has got us back home, even though it's completely dead for at least five, five miles ish. And you, and you, and it's white. It is. Okay, so back inside now, in a lovely warm, having to drive home in one degrees with the window slightly down, stop the car misting up. Luckily, I had a jacket on. Um. Okay. What I want to see is I've got the time. So what I thought was I don't really I want to come home and charge it up as and when when I plug it in. But ninety percent of the time when I come home from work, I won't be using the car again, and it should have enough charge on it anyway to do an errand or something. So what I, what I actually want to happen is when you plug the car in, it doesn't charge you up until midnight on the cheapest tariff. So I thought I, what you can do with the app or with the U Plus website is start the car charging. Um, so what I want to do though, because of that journey we had, a bit of a nightmare journey, um, in terms of running out of battery, but as in it showed displaying it running out of battery, not actually running out of battery, just making you very, very scared for 10 minutes. Um, I'm gonna quickly look at the website. With it plugged in, it's not charging. I wouldn't, I'm just wondering, Will it show the fact, will it, is it connected to the car when it's plugged in basically, uh, long story short, and to give some data, um, or does it have to be charging for it to be able to receive data onto the website and onto the phone app? So I shall spin the car around and show you what I see. This is from previously, so I'm just wondering if I click update, will it, will it update, the last update was half past one today, um, it won't. So it won't update, I don't think. Let's wait and see. It's a bit buggy, to be honest, this website. It's like I clicked that first, you probably saw me click it, and then you saw it spin and stop. And now it's spinning for miles longer. Uh, so we shall see. Oh, by the way, this does not work on Chrome. The browser, Chrome, works on Internet Explorer. Oh, there we go. Look. So it's saying that's the distance I had. That's different, so it's 0% battery. Uh, it says you could do one mile with aircon off. So it's probably right, it probably would have stopped in one mile's time. So if that's the case, it probably does six miles, seven miles, um, once it says nothing. Depending on how you're driving it, where you're driving it, etc, etc. So that's interesting. So what I'm gonna do is see, I can on the app, on the iPhone, to make it start making, to force it to start charging. And we'll see if we can do the same on here. Battery status. Yes, there we go. Charging now. Start charging now. There it is. We click that. Do you sure you want to charge now? Yes. And what I'll do is I'll click yes. And we'll go in here and you should see the lights. It should kick on. Excuse the dryer. But that out there, if successful, should see the lights come on. I'll give it 10 seconds. It doesn't come on, and I won't bother. Go back and see what's happened. Right. Okay. So that hasn't come on. Let's go back to PC. I'm just wondering if it has changed. Don't think it has. Go back to the PC. Start charging now. Charging no. I wonder what happened there then. Definitely click that and it says yes. Try, try again. So the site website seems quite buggy. There's some small bugs in the iOS app, but nothing major. So I think this sends it up to the database first. So I think that's done it more, completing 15 hours. Wow, it's a good job we did start it.
Ah, there you go, see, so you shouldn't see those lights flashing now. See those? That's the light. So it's outside, it's done that, working perfectly. So, 15 hours to charge up. So, where does that put us? Should complete charging in 15 hours. We're at 7 o'clock now almost. So that's 12, 5 hours till 12 o'clock. Wow, so it's 5 hours till midnight. And it's going to be another 10 hours. Blimey, so it won't be charged up tomorrow morning. It's a good job I didn't wait until... Wow. Okay, so it's a good job I didn't wait. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Right, so it's midnight, it's 5 hours then. So it's 10, yeah, 10.30 in the morning. Well, hmm. Okay. So 10.30 in the morning is going to be ready. So it won't be ready in time. Uh, we leave for school, for the kids for school. At half past eight. Oh dear. Okay. <laughs> That's another thing. So the trickle charge is supposed to be 10 hours. If you run it out, like happened today, um, it's going to be 15 and a half hours. Okay, let me just quickly try and uh, plan the route that I did today after setting off with 75% charge, see how many miles it was. And then I'll, I'll come back and show you the map and I'll just let you know how many miles it was to work out what, what happened. You know, was I just being an idiot? Or was I well within the range and it just didn't, it, it was just worse. Um, so we'll find out. Okay, that's the route. I've entered all the places I went to, um, but I've actually realized I don't need to do that because I'm filming this so much. I can tell you exactly what it is because of um, in each video the location I've been in is um, is mentioned. In fact, this time I've been quite lucky because I actually showed the mileage before I set off from the Nissan garage in Colford this morning. Uh, the battery was showing um, seventy five percent, which you'll see previously today, and I did I've done fifty one miles, so seventy five percent. Done 55, 51 miles, so it's I set off at 190 miles and did arrive back home at 241. So in temperatures of an average of about two degrees Celsius. Let me flip the camera around. So what that means is I'd be driving around. I don't see why I should drive a car around not in comfort. So I've always had the heating on, but I did turn it off on the return journey from Newant. Um, so 75% battery, 51 miles, that gives a total 100% charge, will give 68 miles. So I could probably squeeze another two out of that, maybe three miles. So you're looking at a 70 mile, 70 miles out of the new brand new Nissan Leaf in temperatures around about two degrees C. That's what you can expect out of it, and standard driving, uh, pretty much, I would have said, 95% of the time being on eco, and probably 90% of the time being driving as best I can, as economic as I can, and trying to have the regenerative braking kick in as much as I can, and playing the throttle, uh, foreseeing junctions ahead, foreseeing cars ahead, using the regeneration to put some power back in, and here's my wife with the baby, and so it's about 70 miles is what you're going to get. So there we go, 70 miles out of it in 2 degrees C. I think that about sums it up for today. This is Ruby by the way. Yeah, looks about as amused as I do when I'm driving the Nissan Leaf. Can I have my cable back? Bye!